I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You are blessed son. Stay blessed. Lift your voice and let's cry passionately. Please no distraction. Cry passionately for visitation. Lord, we cry for a visitation. Hold someone's hand by your left and right and let us pray in the spirit. dimensions let my spirit my soul and my body host your glory lift your voice and pray in greater dimensions let my spirit pray 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 in higher dimensions let my spirit let my soul oh god let my body be a host a host of your power a host of your glory In greater dimensions, let my spirit host your glory. Let my spirit not just to talk about it, not just to preach about it. In greater dimensions, let my spirit, let my soul, let my body host your glory. Are there people of prayer in this place?
the Lord, just the strings. Um, turn with me to Hosea chapter 12. I want to pray for you before we get to the word tonight. Hosea chapter 12. While I sat there, the Lord just put something in my spirit. Verse 13. Hosea chapter 12. Please. Hosea 12. Just be sensitive to what I'm doing. I'm about to pray for you. Hosea chapter 12. It says, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel. That prophet was his hand. He used the prophet like you use a fetcher to draw water. And by a fetcher, you drew water. You are the one who drew the water. But the fetcher carried the water. And by a fetcher, you drew water out of a well. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt the place of slavery the place where you don't have rights are we together it says again and by the same prophet the Lord didn't just bring them out of Egypt it says and by the same prophet they were preserved do you know why because when you come out of Egypt Egyptians will still pursue you it's not enough to come out there must be a system that preserves you and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and knowing that the Egyptians will still come seeking after them to make sure their testimonies only last one month two months and then they are taken again to slavery Pharaoh said what mistake did I make what happened to me that I let these people go and then the Bible says by the same prophet was he Israel preserved Listen, let me tell you this. We're going to sit down. A man of God went to meet Bishop Oyedeko. He was going to get into ministry. And he said, Daddy, sir, what advice would you give me as a young minister now that I'm going to ministry? And he thought Bishop Oyedeko would tell him, be prayerful, make sure you fast, make sure you teach the word in season. Bishop Oyedeko looked at him passionately like a father would look at a son and spoke to him in Yoruba and said never fight alone that's my advice never fight the first rule never fight alone David you are going to fight who is with you whose son are you from which family do you come from what covenant is assisting you he said told him never fight alone never fight alone let me tell you this do you know the reason why many people remain in the same situation for a long time they have done everything physical but there is no prophetic push in their lives they stay like that they labor foolishly they they are skilled i have seen gifted people i have seen job applicants I have seen all kinds of people this system this kingdom you see is a spiritual kingdom I, I pray that God will help you understand this fast enough that in this kingdom everything starts spiritually when you spiritualize your mentality you have you have set yourself in order for a life of victory nothing ever happens in this life just by the arm of flesh it's a waste of time the arm of flesh is only relevant when there is a backing satan never attacks until he vets that the power to this to defeat you is higher than the force backing you when satan comes to you he doesn't look at you he looks if there is any force backing you jesus i know paul i know who are you so many believers that you are in church that you are coming every week that you are a worker it doesn't justify that you have received this ministry i know what this thing has done in my life this truth you see and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt it's amazing how many people remain in difficulties when there is a route to cheap victory the kingdom of god operates systemically 
if you don't know how these things happen you can labor and labor and labor and labor and labor and create a theology out of your pain that this dimension is not possible and believe that any other person walking in that dimension must be caught in corner spiritually somewhere no he told Cain he says if you offer it paraphrasing according to pattern will it not be accepted the problem was never because you were Cain you refused to do it accordingly are we together I was hearing the testimonies of this these people here and I just sat down and in my mind I'm saying how many other people need the same thing but don't know how to receive it there are people who are not very wise there are people who are not very smart honestly there are people who are not very connected but among the many principles they've painfully adhered to is the foolishness of believing the prophetic word of the Lord and they have watched their lives enter dimension and there are many of us who have come with our philosophies and exaggeration of intellectualism we have stretched everything we know from border to border and all that is left in our lives today is shame shame that vetoes everything your studies whatever there is a way out brothers and sisters there is a more excellent way God brings us here because he loves us and because he wants to help us don't allow the patterns of failure to be too much in your life plenty of people have failed for you already why must you go through all of this again and by a prophet not by a man not by a preacher not by an orator not by a bible reader listen carefully not by one who oil was on his head like just pouring oil and by a prophet how you know he is a prophet is when you are truly delivered anybody can say go out the results justify the office the results justify the mantle because every office God institutes on earth there is a prototype of it in heaven are we together now so when you speak here on earth the same way that throne that system of governance allocated to your grace to validate that he truly called you in that dimension ministers to the people and there are angels that signify anointings listen carefully don't just be conscious of the presence of the holy spirit alone he's not the only spiritual force at work there are angels listen carefully that validate anointings there is a kind of anointing you carry and certain angels start following you there is a kind of mantle a mantle is not an anointing there is a kind of mantle you carry that certain angels come listen there is an office you occupy that necessitates the operation of certain not just angels angels are not the only beings that assist men in heaven there are many we only just know angels as we call them they are all messengers but they don't do the same thing the revelation of Jesus which he gave unto his servant John he sent it and signified it by his angel not an angel his angel an angel connected to that dimension so you are calling to the healing ministry if it is true you are called there are a kind of angels that should walk so when the word of god because they confirm the word of his messengers when that word is released at the authorization of the spirit the holy spirit the holy spirit is the master governor of every spiritual operation so even when the bride speaks they watch on the spirit for permission when the spirit says let it be done let me tell you the same way the bible says the spirit came to resurrect jesus from the dead but we see the dynamics at the instance of the spirit an angel came rolled away the stone sat on it holy spirit you can come he rolled away the stone the holy spirit does not just walk maybe the way some of us think there are real angels so when you come for koinonia it's not just enough it's not only seats you have come to see the human beings you see are a very minute fraction of the hosts of heaven listen a church is not a church because of people 
a church is a church because there must be an access point from that church to the gates of heaven jacob the first mention of the word house of god genesis 28 jacob came it was a stone and a background no chairs no fasting no prayer no nothing and jacob got up he saw angels ascending that means if angels are not ascending and descending that is not the house of god he said this is the gate of heaven so a church is not a church just because there's a man standing and there are people sitting there must be an access point from that location to access heaven and to release realities to people are we together every challenge in your life is relative to the grace the mantle and the office that addresses it every challenge every challenge relative relative the same way you can meet a doctor and be rambling and say doctor sir something is wrong and he just laughs and just prescribes a b c and within days he has been trained to trivialize your challenge don't allow your situation make you believe that just because it is insurmountable to you it means it's so for everybody that's pride though are you hearing what i'm saying that you have tried to access favor that you have tried to access dimensions in the spirit to see an unusual dimension of the gift of the spirit work in you that bankruptcy is not generic it's only personalized to you which is an expression of your limitation in understanding the ways of god are we together i want to pray for you you know it's not by kneeling down and all it's just by receiving we're going to get to the word but i just i just felt in my spirit the lord was impressing while i sat back there to just speak a word so that certain challenges you have done your best you are sincere i know that we are rising in faith god is helping us but the truth is that many of us at this level you have done everything to be done physically you need that prophetic push i know that i speak over your life all the time but remember i'm prophesying as i am commanded i can prophesy as i wish god will still honor it but when he commands then be ready for dry bones to become an army are we together now in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare father your word declares and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet were they preserved father i stretch my hands let it be an extension of the hand that brings breakthrough that brings deliverance and i'm prophesying to someone who is in a pit right now that there is no human way you should come out in the name of jesus christ everywhere across this auditorium if there is anyone in an impossible situation i bring you out now in the name of jesus i send an anointing into that pit where you are and i declare that by a mystery in the name of jesus let the axe head that has sunk into the water i command that axe head to float now I command that axe head to float now. I decree and declare there are people here. The pace that you are moving in life will never allow you to serve God in truth. The pace is too slow to have time for God. And it's a strategy by the devil. Because provided he keeps your mind on tea and bread provided he keeps your mind on these things you will never have the time to focus on the things that matter in the name of jesus the bible says the hand of god came upon elijah and elijah ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab down to Israel. in jesus name i supply speed to your destiny i command supernatural speed speed to your destiny Speed to your destiny. Speed to your destiny. Hallelujah. We are praying. Paul spoke and I said, Once and again, I desire to come to you. He said, But Satan hindered us. But Satan, I desire to come to you. That's your breakthrough speaking. That's your lifting speaking. I have desire to come but satan hindered us 
I have desired just like you prayed since last year you were calling me out I desire to come but Satan hindered us in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God any dimension in the spirit or any allocation from the spirit that was designed by the ordinance of God to be captured in your destiny by now and by witchcraft or whatever manipulation you have not entered into it I command the embargo that stands between you the embargo whether spiritual whether human in the name of Jesus I smash it out of your way now I smash it out of your way now I want to pray for you there are many of you your helpers are not even aware the devil has made sure that every door that will connect you to them has been closed every door nobody willing to help you you suffer alone you pray alone you fast alone you labor alone let me tell you this let me tell you this even if you have money it doesn't guarantee that you have favor favor is not all about money in fact money is, is less than one tenth of the mysteries of favor favor is the ability for men to rise up and come to your aid not just once but to remain so as a reality you can never enter your rest when you are doing everything alone who can rise up for you when adversity speaks who can rise up for you at the gates where you are not here? No one advocating for your interest. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands by the grace and the anointing of the Spirit. I decree and declare, I push you by prophecy into the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. I push you by prophecy, receive of their ministry. I prophesy favor over your life. I prophesy favor over your life. Hallelujah. Two more prayers and then we'll sit down. I want to pray for your finances and then I'll round up with your spiritual life. Listen, let me tell you this. You will never access finances the way many of us are approaching it. That's not the way it works. Everything is first spiritual. It's not by doing business. It's not by getting a job. Doing business and getting a job is simply a system of collecting your spiritual allocation. The Bible says God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings, but they reside in heavenly places in Christ. You don't need it there. The word must be made manifest. It must be made flesh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want to pray for us. Listen, let me tell you by the grace of God we're a people that God has helped and by the grace of God we're a people who God has proven through this ministry that if God helps you financially you can have the time to serve him this demonic distraction that comes by looking for what to eat what to wear that stops us from praying that brings us into yokes that are uncalled for because our daily bread must be met that distracts us there is no time to serve God seven days a week all you are doing is looking for money you get up in the morning money to sleep in the night money the Holy Ghost is talking the thoughts of money chokes his voice let me pray for you the Bible says the prophet said by this time tomorrow by this time tomorrow I want to pray don't be foolish you have had the testimonies that happen money has a spirit that note you see is an obedient servant there is a spirit that controls resources it doesn't come just like that the spirit that the devil put in place to control financial resources is called mammon and you never never can access mammon without bowing to satan so if you want to get resources the world's way get ready to compromise your faith your life your integrity your everything for it but there is another system in the kingdom 
are we together now it says thou shall remember the lord thy god for it is he it is in his office to give you the ability the power to prosper um a lot of people have thought that the power to prosper is concepts ideas insights i believe that but that's just the physical dimension the power to prosper is an anointing there is an exact anointing whose assignment is to call forth resources the same way noah sat there and the animals started coming on their own that's the power to prosper it calls forth people it calls forth resources it calls forth opportunities you don't just use your mouth to call it when that grace is on you it's magnetic it is true has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with a job a job business and every financial vehicle only supplies the value chain for its sustainability but it's originated from the spirit are we together I want to pray over our finances if you don't need it that's all right no I, I i want to believe not everybody needs it but truly there are people here is do you know do you know let me tell you this it's very very i believe that it bleeds the heart of god when we come for a meeting like this where the spirit of god wants to build our spirit wants to help us to know him and all that is in our mind is waiting for when money prophecy will come wait it's, it's a terrible thing you will never grow that way nobody grows spiritually talking about money all the time it's an issue that by the spirit of god you should access be done away with and then you can focus if you don't believe you can solve money issues to know this is solved and turn and face god then there's no point receiving this prayer there is i'm not saying you should not get your job i'm not saying you should not do your business i train i teach people to be valuable but let me tell you this it's a waste if you keep this fan and it's not collected to electricity the fan has potentials this mic although you don't see a wire there is still a technology that ultimately connects it to a generator that you cannot see it does not mean it's not there of the generator you will, I, I don't have to collect the mic from you i just disconnect it from the generator and let you keep switching off and on you are doing the right thing it should work but because it's not connected to something something that was supposed to work doesn't work again are you seeing now so you are doing what you are doing this is actually how to on the mic and off it you are correct but because the generator is disconnected from the mic you do the right thing it still doesn't work it is the life of god it is that connection that activates whatever you do when this anointing is on you it doesn't really matter what you do whatsoever he doeth whatsoever he doeth prospers in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i pray for you by the power of the holy spirit lord you have helped me i have seen your mercy and i've seen your grace you have helped this ministry we have seen your mercy father i pray that the same mercy and the same grace even in the area of finances i cry unto you right now let that grace let that unction come upon someone now let that unction come upon someone now let that unction come upon someone whose family has never believed they can arise lord may that grace be a supernatural bailout system for a family that is in need of your help right now may this anointing come upon your life and roll away shame in the name of jesus by this anointing, I declare that whatever it is you are involved in, I don't care whether it has prospered or not, I command it, I instruct it to work. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for your spiritual life. Listen, in all your growth, if you don't grow spiritually, you are not growing. You can have all the money in the world like I just prayed for you. Listen carefully. 
you can have all the human connections but if you lose sync with what god is doing and you lose touch with spiritual realities then you will not last the value for every aspect of your life is that although these things are there your spirit is still alive unto god you are growing in an ever increasing dimension understanding not just what god wrote in the bible but his program for the nations for now if you lose touch with this present truth god's system of relevance then no matter what else you have you are irrelevant you will watch yourself being edged out of the move of god therefore i pray for you in the name of jesus every distraction over your spirit man i curse it now in the name of jesus christ i decree and i declare whatever has blocked the portals of the spirit from granting you access to the deep and the current speakings of the spirit the deep and the current speakings the deep and the current speakings revelatory dimensions that communicate this present truth i command those portals to be open now in the name of jesus christ whatever has closed and frustrated your appetite for prayer the ability to not just shouting up and down staying with god staying until your spirit man is energized i declare that tonight may you be brought to a new dimension of prayer fire whatever has made you comfortable with where you are spiritually that you don't even see the need to press again in the name of jesus may tonight's teaching plant a strange hunger in your spirit every door spiritually that you are walking in that my god did not open i don't care what dimension you are facing if his word was opened by satan to distract you i shut that door now in the name of jesus christ thank you jesus please be seated lord we give you praise in the name of jesus christ i welcome everyone tonight in the name of jesus it's my joy to bring us the word every time the bible declares that we should be instant in season praise the lord first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 i'll be teaching on something along the lines of first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 helping us to understand certain realities as far as kingdom legislation is concerned one of my greatest uh, prayer for us is that we are trained and equipped not just to see miracles this is a ministry that god has blessed with grace for miracles signs and wonders but i am passionate about inculcating and transferring spiritual understanding in believers you can know the efficiency of a man of god by the quality of the useful spiritual information listen carefully not just random spiritual information the quality of the useful spiritual information that is transferred to the average member not the ministers not the leaders their 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 level of spiritual excellence can be for obvious reasons but that when you when you hand pick anyone at random and discuss with the person over basic spiritual truths foundational doctrines in the kingdom and then especially doctrines that relate to our reigning and our victory you should be able to have an intelligent conversation with such a person that is proof that the man of god and that ministry is careful enough i am passionate about teaching the word of god are we together now because it is in the teaching of the word of god that understanding comes and when understanding comes then the grace the fortitude to release your faith through obedience is released upon you so please i want you to pay attention 
especially for many of us who just come i know some of us have problems and challenges but don't forget don't forget that koinonia primarily is a place of encounter and is a place of growth spiritual growth much more than a place of receiving the miraculous much more than a place of signs and wonders this place will always remain the place of signs and wonders but much more than that this is bethel the place of bread where the hallowed bread of the spirit is open and you receive but much more than receiving that there is an impartation so when you come while you are sitting you see that there is an anointing working in you as the word of god is taught there is an anointing you are not only hearing are we together now you are not if all you are doing is hearing then this is a lecture maybe spiritual in context but it's a lecture what makes it the ministration of the spirit is the presence of the anointing the bible calls us abled ministers and it says that we are ministers after the spirit no matter how articulate and how deeply spiritual i am if this anointing this presence factor is not there then it's a total waste of time are we together so i'm saying this so that we must be passionate about growth young and old we come from different spiritual backgrounds and uh, we aspire for a similar spiritual destiny but in the interim our hearts must be open to educate our mind spiritually it's terrible to be ignorant as a spiritual person you don't need to know everything but there are foundational doctrines of the kingdom that you have to know everyone personally not just to have a tape that talks about it not just to have a book that talks about it not just to attend a ministry or to submit to a man or an anointing that knows it it is a revelation that must be inculcated as part of your understanding are you getting blessed now it's very very important your edge in life much more than the coming of the anointing is the awareness and the understanding of the systems of the kingdom how it works when you call someone a master why is he a master every time i want to access my internet banking platform um gtb is one of my banks and i see them marketing something about a food expo that will be done and i see master chefs five or six of them who will be holding master classes all of them are called master chefs i had the opportunity to watch two of those people and i saw the way they demystified cooking they showed that cooking is scientific you can you can predict what will become in a notable level of accuracy that's called a master a master is a master at foundations when you say you are a master that means the foundations of a system are things that you have at your fingertips you're a master driver there is nothing another driver does not necessarily know it's just that you are a master at that foundation you can turn a car sideways and still be driving it now that's mastery the same tools that someone uses is what you use but with a level of competence that produces a result everything you will need for victory is accessible to everyone but how we engage it is where the difference is. so i not only want us to be sound in the world to be able to quote scriptures blood of jesus fire of the holy ghost there are very ignorant things that believers do that is a pain to the heart of the father we should be able to grow spiritually in understanding to be able to know what to do what to engage how to live in this kingdom you see the goal of this teaching you're coming every week is not just to prove that a man is called of god there is a system of spiritual mentorship are we together your life should become something exact with time you should begin to have an appreciation of the ways of god that a time can come you are well equipped to be able to serve the purposes of the kingdom without fear because you know what should happen and if and when what you want is not what happens there is a system you are aware of that can compel things to come to the obedience of christ if you're with me say amen, amen. first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 
here's what it says but ye are a chosen generation now this is a very interesting word because there were many generations many generations in fact many dispensations the word generation there does not necessarily mean just an age range you know physically we have a bio a biological and physical definition of a generation a particular age range for some 0 to 15 some 0 to 30 make up a generation that's not what god is talking about here he's the word generation there's a word race race of people within a particular context of civilization he said that there you are a chosen generation what does that mean there are other dispensations other races of people but your race your spiritual generation has been particularly chosen so you are a chosen generation and this is where i want us to dwell you are a royal priesthood it would have been all right to say you are a priesthood you are priests but it says you are also royalty you are a royal priesthood then it says an holy nation a peculiar people that ye should with all these things the being chosen the priesthood the royalty the peculiarity all of that is to enable you show forth the praises praises the word doxazo the flaunting of a man's glory making his glory known show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light he called you into his light hold on let me help you understand this what makes you chosen what makes you royal what makes you a priesthood what makes you peculiar is the marvelous light you entered are you getting the whole thing now all of that happened because you entered his he called you into his marvelous light whoever enters that marvelous light is fortunate is blessed the bible tells us that some of these prophets saw these things they sought to walk in these dimensions they kept searching for what manner of times the spirit had revealed they knew that there would come a dispensation of men and women who will be granted archives to these things in fact some of these prophets prophesied it but they were not given insight to understand what they prophesied they just spoke it and left it there but the bible says you are fortunate in that you can not just enter his light but his marvelous light the light access to his mysteries he called you out of ignorance darkness the same expression that is used in genesis chapter one darkness void is the hebrew word tohu abohu darkness ignorance um confusion lack of light lack of hope depression the same expression he called you out of darkness notice he didn't say he called you out of sin notice he didn't say he called you out of witchcraft notice he didn't say he called you out of the devil the major reason why satan sin the devil whatever it is oppressed people was the presence of darkness are you getting what i'm saying now so it's not like satan was so powerful they are called rulers of darkness every time there is darkness their dominion kicks in and he called you so how does god make people peculiar by introducing them to his marvelous light the bible says god who had commanded the light to shine out of darkness he says he had shined in our heart to reveal to us the glory of jesus the the, the glory of the knowledge of god as seen on the face of jesus christ the marvelous light that means listen carefully that means although prophetically you belong to a race that the bible calls a peculiar people and a royal priesthood if you do not accept that that marvelous light is not any light that marvelous light is a spiritual allocation of knowledge that has been given to a dispensation this marvelous light is exact it's not just that god brought you into any light no the light of god is in levels there are certain lights he made to signify seasons to signify times not just the stars in the sky spiritually 
you would read in the bible every time prophets would interact with god sometimes he would tell them seal it you have seen this but just close it and keep it in other words it's not for this race of people how david tried david wanted to access the realities of the messiah david wanted to see redemption he pressed for it pressed for it he saw glimpses of it but could not put it together isaiah saw the virgin birth isaiah saw god becoming man they all saw pieces of it but nobody because there is a an allocation of spiritual knowledge there is a body of knowledge that is given to a dispensation of people and our generation is very fortunate we are not only fortunate because we are spiritual people we are, we are not fortunate because we are better than smith wigglesworth listen carefully we are not fortunate because we are better than all these saints the puritans and the rest we are fortunate because god by his election of grace not that we ask for it by his predeterminate counsel has chosen to bring us into a, a body of knowledge a body of knowledge that can separate us in experience even those who saw these verses only read about it many of them never walked in the experience let me tell you this there are things written in the bible that are not for everybody there are things written in the bible that sometimes are for an individual sometimes are for a race and those individuals not everything written in the bible was for people of old there are things written in our generation there are things written about you one day you will carry your bible and know this is me the bible says in luke chapter 4 the bible says jesus stood up for to read and it was given to him the messianic prophecy remember isaiah wrote this hundreds of years before jesus and jesus was not the first person to read it i they were talking about a man but who was that man every prophet who had access tried they would check against the reigning prophet and say no this does not fit john the baptist uh -uh, it almost fits but it can't be john and all of a sudden jesus comes and opens up the prophecy of Isaiah and begins to read the spirit of the lord is upon me anybody can appreciate it prophetically but there is an exact person it was written for are we together now look up i'm teaching you something if you read the bible as a book that spoke to someone but just applicable to you you are lying there are things written in the bible that have not been fulfilled by anybody outside our race a day will come you will look at it and know that this word was for our generation are you are you getting what i'm saying give me hebrews chapter 11 the last verse let me show you one of those things and then we'll come back to this hebrews chapter 11 read let's go let's start from verse 37 and then we'll go to 40 give us from verse 37 they were stoned they were sown asunder were tempted slain with the sword they wandered about in sheepskins goatskins be destitute afflicted tormented 38 of whom the world was not worthy they wandered in deserts talking about um the archives of faith the patriarchs of faith 39 he said all these who are the these all the guys that were part of those who were recorded i hope you know they never had the opportunity to read the bible because we are now reading about them so by the time we were writing about them there was just the um some of the psalms and the torah and all of that the bible says they received not the promise there was still an expectation in the heart of god and they all did not receive it 40. he said god having provided what some better things for us who are the us the readers not the actors if you never got to read this you were not in that generation it is for those who will read this it says so that they without us as general as they were without us there is there are things written here that no generation has found it will take men of audacity many of us believe that everything that was written in the bible has happened is just the prophetic application no no one day you will open something and see koinonia right there not as a word you will see a chapter of the bible talking about exactly what is happening now 
many of you will know if i told you that isaiah prophesied about you pastor alpha as a person you may say yes prophetically until the spirit when you are called into this marvelous light listen he never said called into light because god made many lights and every generation partook of a dimension of light but there is a marvelous light the same way he made two great lights all the prophets had dimensions of god and based on what they knew that was all about god in their generation until another prophet came and another generation came with another dimension of god and the bible says here that so that they without us meaning there is something about koinonia that must be added to the bible in heaven then when you now read the saints plus the archives of koinonia it produces perfection Let me just allow you to settle down and then we'll take it again. Listen. I hope you know there is a book in heaven where things are recorded. I hope you know that when Paul was having his little teaching and Peter, the plan was not for that to be captured in the Bible. They were living. Is that true? Imagine, imagine in your mind, 300 years from now, let's assume that Christ chooses to tarry none of us here i believe should be alive there's no reason why i should be on earth then i will be alive but not on earth are we together now now imagine that a young boy of 13 years or 15 years then is now reading that uh -uh, in 2018 there was a service that service was held by somebody there was a worshiper called sam he's reading a story we are not reading it because we're the actors but the bible says even those who are the readers there is a path for them in prophecy here to fulfill so that when you now combine both the actors and our generation it will create that perfection there is still a desire in the heart of god in spite of what paul has done in spite of what all of them have done there is still a desire in the heart of god that there is a light there is a body of the revelation of god allocated for a generation none of their generation taught people to live in balance one of the problems with every other generation until our own is that there was a traceable imbalance are we together if they were prophets they had problems even during god's generals most of them found god but there was a level of light that was not given imbalance here and there so jesus found where it was written about him about him literally not about somebody that he applied to his life he was the one they were talking about i pray for you huh that one day you will open the bible and see something and god will tell you son i know you may not believe it but this verse was not written to a prophet that you should receive by faith this one when i said a man i will raise in the eyes of prophecy anybody can apply it by faith but that man was you that the, the bible centrally talks about christ but there are auxiliary revelations about individuals the central message of the scripture is christ but it's not only christ christ is the major doctrine perfect theology the entire focus of the bible is christ but not christ alone his bride he found where it was written about him that a time will come a generation will prosper and that i am sending you and you will think he was talking of joseph until one day you read and god will tell you it is this generation and you are that person listen notice every time god speaks about people he never calls their name everybody has a spiritual name there is a name in the realm of the spirit that men are identified with listen Did you ever see the word Jesus? He say, a virgin shall conceive. Let me tell you how prophecy works. And give birth to a son. 
and you shall call that son did you ever hear them call jesus emmanuel please talk to me but did the prophet lie is god's system so you will not find a jimmy but you will find a spiritual name that you know this is me it was written it will be difficult for you to receive because you say out of the six point how many billion people no read the bible the captains of industry today were written bill gates is in the bible all these guys they were in the bible it's not just that they were in the bible the prophet saw them you will not find bill but you will find him there this koinonia you see this meeting you see is in your bible here that you have read bible cover to cover God, I'm not talking of something that okay God sent Jeremiah oh God like you sent Jeremiah you sent me it's not true you see now the surprise I've not even gotten to my message tonight the surprising part is that demons know they are not in ignorance why do you think spirits pursue certain individuals no they of course satan hates everybody but there are certain individuals he will mark them kill for them do everything around them because you may not know that there is something written that there is a part you have to play imagine when i was born I'm sure my mother would just believe that she she gave birth to whatever it is you know i didn't take breast milk god punished the devil the, the devil wanted to kill me from bed i was fed on lactogen because he wanted to destroy me my mother just felt she was carrying a baby but if only she opened and saw that a woman will conceive this is not mary not mary that a prophet one day was scanning to a generation and saw they saw the generation of the baptism of the holy ghost with stammering lips and another tongue will they praise they left it as a code every prophecy about you in the bible is a code it must be opened let me tell you what happens i don't know why do you know holy spirit well you are you are the lord of this teaching tonight i don't know what is taking me to this dimension but let me three, tell you three things that happens when the code of your destiny is open from scripture one god changes your name listen let me tell you the concept of the change of name sometimes it can be physical but more than that notice there was nobody whose prophetic word opened and a name was not given to him now read your bible cephas saul paul abraham abraham sarai sarah read your bible you see there thou art peter he didn't say your name is peter peter you have found it you have found it they have been calling you selfers but something open your you are peter found it you found it I, you know sometimes when i share these things in my spirit i just i want to be as simple as possible one of my goals as a man of god is not to bamboozle you with complication my goal is to communicate understanding because there are all kinds of people but sometimes you see it's very difficult very difficult to teach these things because you may never know if god appears to you now he will not call you by your father's name he will call you by your name in the spirit you will hear it this is what i'm trying to tell you you will never hear god say a jimmy no 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 a name is a code when you use an atm there are people who use machines let me tell you if this thing does not happen to you there are dimensions of prophecy about your life that will never happen that's why people erroneously just go and carry a name after baptism oh your name is what's your name tosin it just oh my name is, is victory too and you know wonderful but you just call your name a carnal name you are strolling to the swimming pool and they said make sure you have a name what name do we put there just say john or james and you find out no there was a man sent from god but the name was given 
I'm sure that the father would have called him something. But the angel said, no, 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 no. Something had been concluded from heaven. The name that opens this man's destiny is called John. He said, no, no, no. He shut his mouth until he revealed to the wife. So when you see certain things, you will just see that God says, a woman shall arise in a generation and she shall be called a helper. You may not know what it means. You will start thinking, it's not, it may be you, but you never know you are the one until the season comes when you enter this marvelous light the body of knowledge allocated for whoever should walk in it then you'll find out that you will open it and all of a sudden grace 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 just opens you up the name joshua was not given to me by my father the name joshua was given to me by god my biological father and mother did not call me Joshua. Our ignorance in the spirit has costed us a lot of things. You shall call him Emmanuel. Jesus comes. I thought somebody would say, ah, oh God, make sure, make sure you don't miss out. Your name is Emmanuel. No. When the angel now comes, that Emmanuel was a code. The same angel said, you shall call him Jesus. When the, the man, blind Bartimaeus, when he saw him, he cried, thou son of David. Is the son of David Jesus? What, who is the son of David? Son of David is Solomon. So was the man not calling Solomon? Solomon, help me. He said, no. That was a wise man. The son of David is Solomon. Why didn't Jesus say, you are lying? Solomon has gone to be with the Lord. No. Thou son of David, the one who sits on the throne spiritually. Are we, are you hearing what I'm saying? So there are things written in this Bible. I searched the Bible to find out the program of God. But I searched the Bible too looking. Lord, you, it can't just be Koinonia. This is not just Zaria. There is something prophetic. Show me. Where is it? Where is it? It's not just about this. Show me. Many of you just sit down and find a nice scripture. You shall build houses. You shall repair the former desolations. Amen. Of course, prophetically is applied to you. But let me tell you, there is something with your name on it. That you can get up and know that this is my meat to do and finish what was written. I don't know if it's so for everybody. But there are people. One of the things that happens to men when they truly encounter God is that something happens to their name. What is your name? Not what do you want? Jacob, the problem with you has to do with your name. What is your name? Have you been given a name from the Spirit? And he said, no, my name is Jacob. See, I don't care whether his name was, his name was goodness. The name would still have been changed. It's not because he's a cheat and a supplanter. No. Selman means the way to love. Is that not a nice name? Who would not want to give a child a nice name like that? God said, what are you talking about? Let's talk about destiny. Destiny. You carry the name. You carry the office. You carry the crown. You carry the scepter. Every man of God that has ever prophesied to me that didn't know my name never call me my biological name never not once i remember one time i met a dear man of god he's now a dear friend somewhere and he was speaking and he looked at in fact not even i remember a time i think we we're going to was it Benin republic I, I i think i can't remember now Benin republic for a program and we were there you know all these guys that use divination that can stand in the market and start prophesying to you remember they were trying to clear a uh, 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 passport at, at customs and all of that and then i stood close and he looked at me and said joshua he said you see this guy he has seen something in the spirit read your bible 
Jesus was the man because there was no power in that name no there was no power in that name j-e-s-u-s no 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 you call him jesus say, how are you there's food for you so you will be surprised that many of you have been having dreams and in those dreams certain names are called you by spiritual forces they call you names and you think maybe they are talking about bible actors somewhere why are you go is it that you don't know my name i will never forget one time i was having a dream very prophetic dream um i think i wrote it i can't remember i can't i can't even pronounce it well it was a name that was called and he was an angel of the lord who was calling god a name i checked the bible i didn't find that name anywhere but it was a name like tongues a long name <laughs> what is this i wrote i thought it was greek I'm, I'm, let me tell you i studied the bible very very well i'm not a lazy person i checked it check lexicon check everything i just saw some nonsense started coming out but rubbish some of these zodiac things i said no 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 i checked it very well i said but what is this name very long name that was called if someone introduces that name now that person is going to be in trouble what name which one he is called what what name no but the bible says there is a marvelous light allocated for a generation we thank god for what they did the goal of studying the bible is not just to stop there the goal of studying the bible is to understand god's character and by his spirit continue continue what we are living now is being recorded in heaven it will be read and there are people who will learn from it it's not just because there is no spiritual archaeology right no 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 in the heavens one day you will read there are gifts of the spirit you see operate here you may not find them exactly you can just relate them with one that is close to them i told you the gifts of the spirit are not nine they are as unlimited as the spirit himself theologically and for the purpose of of spiritual administration we focus there but there are not nine gifts of the spirit there are dimensions that the evil in this day requires the evil in the then day did not require some of these dimensions so they were sealed and left for our generation are we together the level of deception in our generation is too high there are other gifts that must be opened people go for war and they hide different sets of weapons based on the attack there are times that when the aggression gets bad they now they are all nations of the world have certain weapons that no other nation has seen every some are hiding it in the sea some are hiding it somewhere when the going gets tough then they will bring out those arsenals that's how it is spiritually why am i saying this to us listen carefully you will find yourself walking in very deep spiritual dimensions that if you are not guided you may think it is occult or it is witchcraft and you will throw away the dealings of the spirit just because it is strange now you must be guided don't get me wrong don't dabble into all kinds of spiritual things and destroy yourself but many people have just camped around the stories of the past wonderful but brothers and sisters there is what god is doing and the bible says that we are a chosen generation we are a royal priesthood a holy nation hold on who was saying this who was saying this huh do you know who was saying this 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 was peter the apostle saying but ye who was he talking to that means he was not there but you read it now did you learn it, it didn't say but we but you the people i'm talking to you are a chosen generation i'm not in your generation revelations let's go to the bible let's go to the bible revelation chapter 5 revelation chapter 5 
please sit down revelation chapter 5 is god helping us tonight see sometimes god just disorganizes me like this revelation chapter 5 let me show you something <laughs> let's read from verse 8 from verse 8 to 10 now look at this and when he had taken the book the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb so the four living creatures 24 elders are we together the bible says they fell down before who the lamb having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors which are the prayers of the saints verse 9 and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open his seals for thou was slain and had redeemed the word us there is an error the 24 elders and the four living creatures are not part of the redeemed the word there is redeem them unto god by thy blood out of every kindred talking about inhabitants on the earth out of every tongue and people and nation verse 10 and has made them not us you see the mistake again in translation and has made them unto our god kings and priests and they shall reign the 24 elders don't reign on earth come on now talk to me the four living creatures don't reign on earth they are in the throne room they minister to god translators messed up some of these things and if you don't read by the spirit you will just gather all kinds of things the bible says we have been made unto our god kings and priests and the domain of our legislation is on earth that we shall reign on earth now watch this imagine imagine with me that one of the 24 elders was reading this thing of course he would know it's not them he can't be talking about them and they'll be wondering what generation because they themselves don't know everything nobody in heaven knows everything except god they see it part two and so they'll be wondering ah, which generation is this going to be fulfilled in and all of a sudden a generation comes brothers and sisters listen let me tell you there are things that will happen in our generation that have not happened before they will not be error because they have been written it is whatever was not prophesied and is done that is error you see that that it has not been done doesn't mean it has not been said there are things that will happen the coming of jesus has not happened everyone who wrote it has gone to be with the lord and yet it has not happened but we know and nobody will argue that it will happen because it has been prophesied so also like the coming of jesus there are many other things that have been written but they were written in coded forms you have to be brought in permit me to use the word like occult you must be ushered in like the freemason call or the illuminati they can call you and say look we want you to become part of this brotherhood to give you access to certain things god has said i have kept this dimension for a generation that means no matter how many times abraham fasted he never would have entered certain things we are not entering it today just because we fasted more or we prayed more there's a place for spiritual discipline but that our generation has been chosen say chosen that's the word chosen chosen it's an election of grace that god decided by his predeterminate counsel that in a dispensation there will be a people who will be opened other doors and they will see these lights and have access to a dimension of god and reveal to a generation this is what makes us royal priesthoods peculiar people a holy nation called out the same way god called israel out and showed israel something no other hedonistic nation could see it was that light it is being called into light that shows that you are peculiar are we together now we have been called we have been called i tell myself i am so privileged to see and to know the things that i know sometimes i read the bible and i'm not reading a storybook in all honesty 
and without any sense of pride i read and i say but if i were not apostle joshua selman i would still say this guy whoever they were talking about here this guy must be joshua selman now some ignorant fellow will now come and start saying that this guy is claiming he's the messiah no that, that's not what we're talking about it is finding the scripture about your destiny that opens you up you see when you see a man walking in some results of result there are forces some dimensions of result there are spiritual forces that back up this operation they don't just happen just like that you check your bible you will find reinhard bonke there you check your bible you will find benihin there you check your bible you will find bin laden there you check your bible you will find isis there they are all coded the people who did this thing found it they found it by divination some of them were called into the inner courts of the spirit and were told this is your destiny you will be an agent of destruction and he said really there are some presidents and governors now that have been ushered by extraterrestrial brains into the archives of the spirit see your destiny this is what you will carry and from birth they move them like that why do you think some of these royal families take time to choose a wife and a husband you come and say you like them they say go away they go and bring out old books and check and call some people and say no the wife should come from so 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 family it was prophesied already that whoever will marry prince this or prince that must be from this family they now start finding where that lineage went to and now check and say ah you are from this family do you have a daughter yes where is she and the naive girl is sitting they say congratulations I say what say just come she thinks she's going no she's something was written about her listen to what i'm teaching you what i'm teaching you is a very deep mystery in the spirit but it's true are we together lo i come as it is written of me in the volume volume one volume two volume three to do thy will it is written of me joshua selman all oh, great things have i spoken of you oh zion something is written something you have been reading what is written about others and applying it by faith prophetically yes but there must be something you will find written about you that a jimmy for this purpose i brought you for this time for this and that and that day you stand and you are no longer reading the bible you are reading you so it is true that i will be a deliverer so it is true that one day this will happen jesus read that he was going to die so when he saw death he did not run away it was part of his assignment he knew god will be so dull to allow major events happen on earth without capturing them here no no a man causing global harvest for the kingdom reinhard bonke and you believe that all he's doing was just an application of what paul did no sir no sir let's have spiritual intelligence let me tell you this some of you your being in zaria now has nothing to do with your wish it's prophecy it was prophesied since whether you are aware or not is not the issue this gentleman came from accra ghana he's been around until one day you will check the archives of prophecy whether written in the bible or revealed by the spirit and you will see that god said at this time so 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 person would be here because after such and such a time he will encounter an anointing and he will start something so for that to happen god made sure no other university gave you admission you applied them um, if uh, you applied everywhere but if if they gave you admission there it would jeopardize prophecy so you had to pay the price of five years so that you would be there you see that 
I would be the last person to believe I should be in Zaria by this time. What will I be doing here? For God's sake. But prophecy. Zaria, me, doing what? Haba. Prophecy. One day you will meet one old woman in Zaria somewhere who used to love God in the 80s. She will say, my son, come. Let me show you something God told me when I was 22. Behold, a young man will arise from this soil. You will see. That's what she will tell you. And say, God revealed to me that a time will come, a move of God will start in Zaria. I'm now 81. When I was 17, I said, Lord, when will it happen? And then all of a sudden, a young boy is moving around and the hand of God is trailing him. There are many of you seated here. Do you know why your life is unusual? Because this thing, a verse in scripture has been looking for you and it will never stop until you are found. A verse in scripture. This Bible you see is a gateway. It's a portal. It's not a magic book. It's not just about cramming scripture. There's something that has been written about you. Mighty in this world Mighty in this world Mighty in this world You are mighty in this world Mighty in this world Mighty in this world You are mighty in this world generation perish because you will obstruct prophecy just one carelessness leaving a region when you should not leave alone will destroy your life listen listen to me we are talking prophecy here let me suspend my teaching for tonight for next week but let's just flow with what the spirit is doing listen to me you see a spiritual man is not an ordinary man a spiritual man is governed by many factors the spirit but also governed by the truth everything on earth is like a football playing everybody there is something if a genie does not do a whole generation will perish if god is merciful then god will raise a replacement but that replacement must arise otherwise some things will not be done there is something if pastor alpha does not do in Kogi state that state like this as a territory may never enter certain dimensions it's not just about looking for ministry it's prophecy that you have found it this is my contribution to the coming of christ this is what the prophet when isaiah was seeing many things i was part of what he saw this is it this is it let me tell you this hold on there are some of you ladies your assignment on earth is to give birth that's it not to preach your assignment is your room this room you are seeing your assignment there is somebody that has been prophesied that must come out through your room if it's another room something will be wrong it must be your room mighty on your mighty on your mighty 
Listen carefully. I know that it's true that we say no man is indispensable. It is true. But let me tell you this. There are men who they are not aligning can cost a generation 30 extra years. Just one person. God will find another replacement but it will never be the way it would have been. If I didn't answer the call of God upon my life God's purposes will still be moved. But there are people born again today who would never meet Christ. Their children will never find God. There is a dimension just like you. There is something. You are not just coming for... Let me tell you this. If you ever find yourself in Koinonia that you came alone, you will need to see the spiritual forces you fought. This place is a place of birthing. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's like a place of spiritual registration. You are answering present. They have been calling you. Where are you? John. John. And the Spirit of God says, come. And you come and say, present. I'm here. I'm here. Where did you come from? Aquaibom. Now come. There is an allocation for you. It may not look like it now. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters. It may not look like it. But believe me. Believe me. There is a place written for you. My dear sister. Don't let marriage issue kill you. There is something here. That's why God is meticulous about you. A guy will come. God is saying yes to everybody. And God will tell the guy, get out of this place. And it's not like he hates him. There is prophecy. That wound is not your own. It's for a generation. Mighty on your throne. Listen, I want you to go back and trace the story of how you came to Zaria and trace the story of how you got Koinonia message. It's a miracle. It has to be an angel. No, no, no. It's in, it's in, it has to be spiritual. When you find out, that's when you see that. So this is what was happening. So I am this important. Brothers and sisters, hear me. What happened? was that there was a blast from heaven and all those who must be relevant in god's program not only through koinonia wherever you are if that trumpet sounds i tell you you must come where it is not whether you want to you can be doing your thing and god said let's go let's go quickly and let me build you sometimes you see listen god acts as if he doesn't pity you no He's looking at the generation that are dependent on your obedience. And he said, not even your tears will make me stop. Because a woman's destiny is tied to your revealing this dimension of God. Listen. Listen. Let me find somewhere. And I just feel, let's pray. First Peter 2 and verse 5. I was actually going to talk about kings and priests. The concept of royal priesthood. We'll, we'll take that next week, but let me just take just one of the aspects. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. One of the primary roles of priesthood, the Bible says, is to offer. It says, ye also, as lively stones, listen carefully, are being built up into what? A spiritual house. The house of God, the gates of heaven, a connection to the heavens you are being built you are what a holy priesthood what is your assignment to offer up spiritual sacrifices listen spiritual sacrifices are many things the constraints that you must go through so that god will be birthed in a generation is a spiritual sacrifice it takes only priesthood to 
to make that happen when i push you people to pray to fast you are being built there is there is a sacrifice like a woman is about to give birth and he said madam eat well be strong because you will need to push the bible says as priests our assignment among others is there is a spiritual sacrifice there is a dimension of god it will take a heavy sacrifice to reveal you must be built built up into that house it says to offer up some of you that sacrifice is your body to offer it up some of you that sacrifice is your worship some of you that sacrifice is your ambition some of you that sacrifice is your destiny some of you that sacrifice is your certificate that you labored went to school you want to get a job and god says no you will need to lay down that certificate you must be built otherwise your sacrifice cannot be acceptable to offer up you are lively stones you are part of a building hear me koinonia you are part of a building you may be a first timer that just strolled and said wow god see these guys you are using god is saying that you were here you are also part of those stones we have been looking for you where were you we are supposed to be putting lintel now but by now you should have entered a dimension and you are just getting born again anyway hurry up hurry up because there is a space for you in that building you have delayed the building because you refuse to get born again fast when god is saying let me use you the devil is there wasting your time and now you see that there is a space for you how dare you look down on god's people and think it's just only one guy called of god no sir no sir you may not look like it now every one of these people you see you think that they are serving joshua selman they are lively stones there is a part in this building i know we say it prophetically all of us are contributors we don't know what we are saying it is true there is something if ejimi does not release to this generation god will appear and say ejimi why look at he will show you a vision of the woman dying he will show you a vision of another family and said all this were tied to your obedience there are some of you ladies here you don't want to marry but God will look at you and say, you must marry. Say, Lord, I don't want. He said, then you are selfish. Because there is a child from your womb who will anoint a child from another woman's womb who will be the one to take over the children. And that other child has been born but your own womb. It's not just about having children. Listen. Listen. You see why some people are barren? This is what Satan is stopping. Barrenness is not just a, a demon no satan has already seen the program from here okay sam's child will give birth to this oh sam's child and pastor As alpha's child so they are the ones who will preach in that crusade okay stop pastor alpha from having a child so that the program satan does not stop everybody he's selecting he's not stupid he's looking at people who will make a major stoppage So some of you can just sit down and find out that you got born again and when others get born again they are happy miracle alert but you got born again and for one year is warfare satan is saying this is a big blow to the kingdom why did promise get born again by now you would have remained somewhere ha, what do we do to promise now okay let's make sure his wife is not born again or let's make sure she's barren I told God something I said Lord everything I represent to my generation everything that was written about me there are many other people but there is a role and I will play that role in life and death some of you here listen to me this thing tonight is a call by the Spirit God is saying look son daughter because of you something is not happening there are songs that you guys are supposed to bring you have been doing music training wonderful but sit down and say lord what are the songs for this generation what are the songs speak to me not just to teach people how to play keyboard and guitar sit down what are the songs 
What are the songs? Miriam wrote a song. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Miriam wrote it. Today we sing it as a song of victory. We must write something that our children will read. Look at these little children. There is a heritage we must leave for them. That heritage is called a spiritual sacrifice. You will pray where you don't need to pray. You will fast when you shouldn't. It will pain you. But every time you want to give up, you will remember something was written about me. If Anna the prophetess did not pray, Jesus would not come home. Her assignment, how can a woman's assignment be to pray and fast for, for 60 years? I was born. Madam, what is your assignment? To pray for who? There's a young boy I always see in a vision. And God said, I called you to pray in the temple till he comes. Mary, what is your assignment on earth? A ghost told me I would give birth to a son. Is that all? How about my, madam, you are a smart lady. But that's what he told me. If Mary gave birth to any other child, aside from Jesus, she would still not be featured in the program of God. Listen to me. In this season, not everything is important to God. You have to find out this present truth what is God saying about my life why am I like this why the attacks at the center of it all it's you that I see it's you that I see all these sacrifices Lord at the center of it all it's you that I see. It's you that I see. For there is power in your name. Name that is above all me. Never care. Listen, I think we should pray. Listen, I'm going to give you the next 10 minutes. Huh? We are going to pray. And the prayer, listen to me. The prayer is, Lord, yes to your will. Listen, many of us think the call is a call to be a, a preacher or a preacher's wife. That's foolish thinking. The call is, God is saying, is a relay. You have been delaying people. People are standing. Lord, yes to it. Yes to it. Lift your mouth. Open your mouth. Blast in tongues. And say, Lord, yes. 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 Yes to the prophecy that was written about me. Yes. Yes as a kingdom financier. Yes. Yes as an apostle of the Lamb. Yes. Yes, as a prophet to the nation. Yes, as a mother in Israel. Everybody pray. Lo, I come. In the volume of the book. It is written of me. It is written of me, Joshua Selman. It is written of you. My parents may not have known it. My siblings may not have known it. But there is prophecy upon my life. Relevant to the move of God. Within a generation appointed to be a partaker of the marvelous life chosen chosen literally chosen and picked by the wisdom of god Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. When you find what was written about you, you see, let me say this. Look at me. Many of us here, you are going to find out things that were written about you that may not be major. Like Paul was teaching about, um, I, I think it was in 1 Corinthians 12, he was talking about 14, 12, 13, 14. He was talking about the members of the body. Let me balance something here. Some of you are going to discover that the role you have to play in the kingdom may not be as vocal as being the president of a ministry or heading a ministry. And you will allow flesh. Listen, please listen. Everyone listen. You will allow flesh intimidate you to mean just because God has called Joshua Selman to head a ministry. Let me tell you this. I want to show you a secret. I'm already, I'm already touching my teachings of some months. I have a teaching that I'm going to bring here called the mystery of the veil. It's a revelation God showed me. The veil. Do you know why the bride in ancient times used a veil? Because everything glorious is covered. The more a thing is in hiding, the more the glory. That's why the father hides in light. Listen, there is a relationship between glory and the veil. Are you seeing that now? So the parts of your body that we cannot see are the parts that make what we can see work. So if you find out that as part of the body, you are occupying a position that is not visible, it's not a thing to cry. It means you carry a higher weight of glory. Listen. Yes. When, please help, help. When, when, when Rebecca was brought to be a wife to Isaac. Listen, this is a bride. On her way going, the moment she saw Isaac, she veiled herself. I'm a woman of glory. She veiled herself. So your heart, you may never see it. But let your heart stop walking and all your hands. Do you know all the parts that take people to the hospital are parts they cannot see? You just see that the hand is no longer working. The leg is not working. You go and meet a doctor and say, doctor, what is wrong? They say, ah, this guy has diabetes. Just because of something going on inside. When you are sick, even if they rub something on your hand, it's just, it is the one you swallow that goes in that you cannot see is the one responsible for your vitality listen i just felt like ministering this some of us our ministry is behind the veil and because of that you may feel very left out there are many ladies you want to be in front there are many guys you want to be in front the greater honor is when you are hiding are you getting that now yes the greater honor your blood vessels hiding your blood itself hiding yet that's what carries every other thing to your body are we together but i can see the hand i can see the mouth so you would think the mouth is so important let the heart stop pumping and that's when you will see so there are some of you god is going to call you to ministries that are behind the veil you may be in koinonia you may be anywhere else and you find out that just because i'm a member of the worship team i'm not in ministry is them apostle you are wrong you are even the stronger part some of you are quietly in prayer band 12 o'clock every night you pray for me and you may never think it's a ministry stop praying for me and you will see the attacks on my life that's when you will know that you are more glorious than even me holding the mic have you learned something tonight let me tell you this it's a big secret I learned. If you want to be relevant to a generation, uh, let a majority of your life be hidden. If all of you is seen by everybody, you are not strong. You are not powerful. No. All your revelation, all your rema, all your finance. Oh, no. A greater part of your life should be hidden. Look at God. God hides in light. No man sees him. 
Jesus came on earth just three years and he left. But many of us are see me. I want to be the, the no. The happening people are usually the ones that are not even the strongest. Believe me. The electricity that powers this, you cannot see it. But that is what is moving the fan. You are only seeing the fan. But there is the electricity. Some of you are like that. So in finding your place, let the devil not deceive some of you to just say, Kai, I'm touched by this message. I must go and pioneer a ministry or pioneer this and destroy yourself. Some of you may be in hiding. That you are a pastor or that you are marrying a pastor doesn't mean you must be a preacher. There is a difference between a pastor and a preacher. There is a difference between a pastor's wife and a preacher. That you can be a prophet or a prophetess. It doesn't mean you are a preacher. Anna the prophetess was an intercessor 60, 60 years or 64 years. Abraham was a prophet. Moses was a prophet. Father, show me my place in your program. Open my eyes to see it. Open your mouth and pray. Show me my place. Pray, show me my place in your prophetic blueprint. In this season, show me. Show me, show me my place. going to pray and say father what sacrifice must i make for this grace to speak in my generation some of you the sacrifice is that you will not marry the person you want to marry some of you the sacrifice is you will have only one child that's the sacrifice some of you the sacrifice is you will have seven children you plan for two but god will say seven because the sixth child is the prophet and so god will say you can't stop some of you the sacrifice is night prayers must continue till jesus comes some of you the sacrifice is you must be rich you can't be poor the sacrifice is your wealth for some of you the sacrifice is the anointing you must stay till you find power you must stay till you find power. You can't do ministry. No, no, no. You must stay till you find power. That's the sacrifice. For some of you, it's utterance. You must stay till the spirit of revelation enters you. Lord, I'm willing to make the sacrifice. I receive grace. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. I don't know what it will cost me, but oh God of heaven, I am ready.
listen there are some of us your assignment in life has to be to reveal the power of God no matter how people criticize you if you rob your generation of that dimension then God will never be glorified are we together hear me there are some of you the family you came from that you are not proud of oh my father is an iron bender my womb, my mother sells akara in the market no that spiritual g was a combination needed for your destiny are you getting what i'm saying now you may not know that akara seller that you are not proud of and that that man that you think is just maybe an iron bender i'm not proud of him something came from two of them that is necessary for your grace that background if you came out from any other background aside from that you will never believe what i'm telling you now so god took you some of you are from families that there is no father no mother there is a reason for everything listen when you bring the prophetic dimension of life everything suddenly makes sense i see i see why i'm the only boy in my family i see why i'm the only lady i see why god allowed all my siblings to grow and then i later came as last born if i was born in the same age range they would never allow me to serve god i now see the wisdom of god that's why the bible says my ways are higher than your ways you may not know why it's happening there are some of you you would have graduated now but you went and you saw an extra year and god is saying stay god may not have been the one that caused it but he can use it for his glory if you if you travel you probably would have married somebody now and given birth to a man not giving birth to that prophet and it is in your staying remember listen it was so ordained that a woman would be the first to see jesus at resurrection because women are gates but the bible says all the other disciples came and when they looked they ran away out of fear but a woman came when she looked she stayed there it is her patience she refused to go as she stayed and stayed and stayed suddenly she saw a man you see that the angels came what is all this there is power in waiting be careful breakthrough is not rush don't compare yourself with other people you will be foolish i don't know who i'm speaking to but god is speaking to someone don't rush your life other people have cars i must have car or, mm -mm, mm -mm. be prophetic in your approach to life there is destiny upon your inside there is a reason why joseph had to be a carpenter to be the earthly father of jesus there is a reason why mary had to be a virgin it's not an insult on other women who are not virgins but there was there was a reason there was a reason why it was not just mary's womb anywhere jesus was kept had to be virgin the donkey he would climb the tomb he would stay it was not about mary it's a principle because he had to be first born among the begotten and the firstborn is the one who opens up things anything if anybody ever came out through the womb of mary jesus could not be the firstborn are we together this is my prayer all the time i don't live a foolish life i live a life that is prophetic i have found where it has been written when you find this no matter who persecutes you no matter what devil comes from where you just look and say you you are entitled to your opinion that is a derivative of foolish perception that is not kingdom but when you look at it here you will now see some of you will now see why you have been in zaria lord why am i here and god will not answer you just stay that's the answer lord let me also enjoy the common sense of living a useful life and God says just do what I'm telling you stay your staying too is an assignment
sacrifice it takes sacrifice to do every one of these things that you see brothers and sisters but when you know that you owe a generation a dimension of God it constrains you some of you see a Jimmy here training people and helping people to be wealthy there are people who can just look and say ah this guy likes money it's a burden it's ministry there is a generation that needs it you see why we're particular and all these are doctors because we don't just want people who give people injection and prescribe drugs if that's all you do with your life then you are not very useful to the earth because there are many of you already but when you find your place in life there are people when we give back to we rejoice because of what happened listen let me advise people here if you are pregnant here or you have given birth stay with God to name your child don't get up this this these names we give children that are a product of carnality sometimes people are drinking beer and then somebody somewhere you don't need to call anybody in the village to say what is the name of my child they can suggest stay with God and find out what is the destiny of this child don't say I've always liked James what are you saying we have destroyed the lives of people some of you are carrying names today that frustrated your destinies like Jabez because it was not from the bowels of the spirit that those names were given Satan made sure that he changed your destiny by changing your name are we together I may not advise you to go and change your name but let me tell you sincerely 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 names are spiritual names are spiritual Saul in the New Testament after the resurrection still his name was changed to Paul why didn't they say former Saul Paul the apostle of the Lamb names are so important the foundation of heaven is made with names 12 names make up the foundation of heaven not your house so your name can serve as a foundation of your life nonsense demonic names that have attracted trouble to people the bible says jabez jabez was angry the mother named him in sorrow the guy got up an innocent person trouble from the left and right I told you about a gentleman who the mom cursed him she gave him a name she may not call him a name but she told him that until rat stops stealing he will never stop stealing that's a name a name is not it's a system of identification give him a name that guy will come out of prison now just they will advise him he will sit down they will counsel him two weeks is back because a name if God helps that guy and he encounters a true apostolic and prophetic ministry and that embargo is lifted in his life, it's not, that's, that's how he will remain. He will give birth to a child. The child will carry the name. When these things leave people, they don't leave the earth. They still wait for violators and come upon them. The leprosy of Naaman. It left Naaman but he was still there. And Gehazi made himself through greed as a scapegoat he came and said calm down please my master just made up his mind there's there's something can you give me i said oh, no 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 why not while he was giving the leprosy was hearing go to this man and his generation and a prophet confirmed it look at how a stupid man enslaved his generation because of greed do you not know that the sacrifices that you make today is not just for you it's not just for your children listen to me it's not just for your children's children when God say young man for the next 20 years of your life make sure every night you are praying oh God what is it for when God is saying that he's looking at your 18 year old son and an encounter that we need to come to that child and he says continue to pray it it may not make sense but continue some of our parents prayed non-stop for 25 years for some of you to be here is that true they prayed every night no matter how tired you are sleeping you hear mama praying 
oh god use my children you are snoring away your destiny your mother prayed some of them they prayed till they died that's the prayer you hear god is changing your name to start an order our generation shall praise your name our generation shall praise your name our generation shall praise your name our generation shall praise Father, tonight you have dealt with us in such a dimension that we are grateful. Lord, I know you are building us. There is something you are doing in us. We may look ordinary, but there is not only destiny upon our lives, there is prophecy. Something was written in the Bible that addresses us directly. And Lord, we vow a vow as a generation that we will not fail you. We vow. We will arise and fulfill our destiny. We will arise and recover all that was lost. Let us arise in mighty victory. We will arise. Yes, we will arise. I will arise and fulfill the prophecy. I will arise. And recover all that was lost. I will arise in mighty victory. I will arise. Yes, I'll arise. I will arise. Yes, I'll arise. there are friends God is asking some of us to leave not because they are bad but because they are an interruption to prophecy you must let them go there are relationships God is asking some of us to leave not because they are bad but they are an interruption to prophecy listen carefully i'm rounding up there are geographic locations god is speaking to for some of us not because he's bad but because it's an interruption to prophecy your priesthood demands that you make spiritual sacrifices listen to me some of you are crying i see people crying don't be afraid don't be ashamed of your tears it is costly to carry the glory it is costly to carry Shekinah I can tell you this firsthand I am a student in the school of sacrifice I know what sacrifice is your time your life your energy yes. you are never we are rounding up. I want you to listen to me, especially those of you outside. Anything valuable comes at a cost. My brother, my sister, listen to me. It will never be at a platter of gold. No. You will not carry a financial mantle at a platter of gold. No. You will not carry a true anointing for a generation, not for a service, not for a program not for a convention the mantle for a generation some of you it will cost you 
your nutrition and your dieting. Yeah. You will fast till you fast your life out. But it's the sacrifice. For some of you, it will cost you. The cost will be loneliness. Because he's calling you to be a seer. You will not be a public figure. For some of you, the call upon your life, listen carefully. The prophetic call is not something that you just sit down prophesy names and numbers. There is a spiritual sacrifice. Let me tell you, I say it with all humility. This man you see standing has blood dripping from him, from the left and the right. This anointing you see doesn't just happen just because a man loves God don't just admire power until you see what is behind the veil are we together you don't just talk and people are falling down like that people are not idiots this is not going to listen to a man's message it's not just going to YouTube or getting messages and listening and no 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 Many preachers will tell you, listen, we're rounding up. Many preachers will tell you it doesn't matter. It matters. It matters. This is a realm and a dimension I'm walking in. I can tell you how to get there. Take sacrifice. Your night will have to be turned to an altar if it's power you want. You will need to learn when to turn the plate upside down even at your own sacrifice if your belly is your god you have you have you have prostituted away the opportunity for power hallelujah you will hardly see me moving around on this you think listen i'm a human being i have a life sometimes i want to stroll around too just like others and go and be happy sometimes i want to move around too and enjoy life like others but the call or the prophecy or the assignment it's not because i'm a public figure no sometimes i also want to go on vacation am i not a human being can't I honestly go on vacation and go and rest? It's the sacrifice. We are going to pray one last prayer. But I'm opening our eyes. Some of us have just been admiring, anointing and ministry. I'm opening your eyes to see. Brothers and sisters, it's a sacrifice. I want to marry a man of God. I want to marry a man of God. It's a sacrifice. It's not just mama or... or anointing or whatever nice surrender sacrifice that's the language of kings in this kingdom whatever you ask of me I surrender Turn it into a prayer and let's pray this song. Whatever you want from me, whatever you ask of me, my surrender, my reputation, my life, everything. Whatever you want from me, whatever you ask of me, my surrender.
from your heart. That's your prayer tonight. Whatever you ask of me, oh, he will ask things. My God will ask things. He will ask for your time. He will ask for your passion. Two more times. Whatever you ask of me, Father, what do we have that was not given? For a man can receive nothing except it be given to him. You gave us life. You gave us destinies. Lord, tonight you have moved upon us seeking, seeking to have more of us that we occupy that position of priesthood in the spirit and lord there is a demand upon us in this season that we offer up spiritual sacrifices like an evening oblation we lift it up we cry we cry that not only the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart but our sacrifices will rise like an incense to the heavens that it will call for your mercy that it will call for your power that it will call for your presence build us oh god like living stones to become a spiritual house a spiritual house in experience grant us access to the light a portion for our generation the dimensions of you by the spirit that we ought to know that will be able to communicate spiritual realities in a higher dimension a dimension higher 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 than that of the saints of old the bible says so that they without us we are the perfection of your church and so we cry as a bride longing for her husband even so come maranatha we call on the word we call on that light come come to us come revelation come portals of the spirit come vistas of heaven come let heaven be opened over us in unusual dimensions even in this season lord we truly want to be purposeful we want to walk not just in our destinies but upon the prophetic words revealed about us in scripture literally revealed about us show us oh god cause our eyes to see and that our hearts coming to a point of understanding that we will walk in the path of destiny any decision oh god that we have made or are making that is out of sync with this prophecy we cry for the spirit of repentance let there be a realignment let there be a repentance let there be a readjustment in the name of jesus bring us to that point where we are accurate accurate in the path of prophecy lord once again we dedicate this house to you once again we dedicate everyone who is part of this ministry the thousands of people here on ground the thousands of others following the millions who will access these teachings lord that everyone who will hear this message let there be a rumbling let deep call on to deep that years after today May this message retain its freshness in the spirit. Let this message be a clarion call in the spirit. Let it be a shofar. In the name of Jesus, let it make a distinct sound in the spirit. And that everyone who is called by your name, a portion to be relevant in your program in this season, that as they hear this message, let something within their spirit cry out. Let this message be an instrument of revival for nations. In the name of Jesus, preserve the anointing that came tonight upon these teachings. And let everyone who hears this teaching carry the same grace. We bless you. Use us for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ.
in the name of Jesus Christ some of us may be doing well in one area may be doing well in another area find the area where you know you cannot say you are experiencing greatness in and in one minute cry to God and say Lord visit me in this area go ahead pray with all your heart Lord you have granted me access to revelations I thank you step in over my finances Lord you have helped me in the area of my finances but my spiritual life is crushing to pieces grant me grace you have granted me access to revelations but my mind my mind is barren I need a miracle in my mind increase my capacity understanding make sure you are praying this is a miracle service many of the challenges that we have in our lives are dependent on these things whether you are standing whether you are at the window whether you are everywhere following online just go ahead and connect don't allow the little inconveniences to distract you it's a very serious prayer everyone that asketh receiveth lord increase my greatness increase my greatness comfort me increase my greatness for the sake of my family members increase my greatness for the sake of the gospel increase my greatness for the sake of the ministry the church you have committed increase my greatness for the sake of the lost souls millions billions of them increase my greatness for the sake of having your purposes preserved within a territory hallelujah praise the lord are we blessed let me just talk about one key there are many but for tonight just to add to what i've shared just one key that can help us grow in greatness greatness is a system remember that the kingdom of god operates on mysteries and systems say after me mysteries say after me systems the kingdom of god is systemic god never does the same thing twice when he does a thing once he creates a system around it for continuity are we together he never created the plants and the animals twice he did it once and put a seed in it for reproduction he made one man one woman never to make another one again are we together there is a system so if your life is to excel it must be built on systems if your life is built on miracles as much as you are going to receive them miracles are a sign that something went wrong and the sovereignty of god is intervening to correct we were never designed to live off miracles listen very carefully if you live off miracles you will live a frustrated life we live off principles we live off the systems of the kingdom the systems of god create predictability they are an attestation to his justice the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne never mistake a miracle to mean that's how god wants it to continue a miracle is a stepping in of god to correct something that shouldn't be you are working properly when your life is systemic are we together first corinthians chapter 4 please give us verse 1 and verse 2 let's talk about just one key here faithfulness say after me faithfulness second corinthians chapter 4 it says let a man so account of us as of the ministers of christ paul is speaking now and stewards paul uses a very interesting language not not owners he calls them stewards the word steward is the word caretaker caretakers of the mysteries of god number two he says moreover it is required in stewards if it is true that you are a steward there is a requirement and he says moreover it is required in stewards that a man whoever says he is a steward must exhibit a character called faithfulness faithfulness he says must be found faithful there are many people who may never rise beyond their current levels of influence their current financial level their levels of the anointing of revelation because they have other things but they lack this quality 
faithfulness in the kingdom you grow it looks simple but write it in the kingdom you grow and jesus grew in wisdom jesus grew in stature jesus grew in favor with god and with men we live in a time where we admire people's results every time we see uncommon results whether in the area of the anointing the demonstration of the spirit revelations influence etc every time we see that people are stepping into unusual levels of grace we don't admire the process we rather admire the results hallelujah i see people come to me and i know they are well-meaning and they just kneel down and say sir double portion of your anointing and i said look, look at what this guy is asking are we together it looks like a very that's why some of you came here probably to get a double portion the mother of james and john came to jesus and said jesus i have a request on behalf of my two sons you've been seeing them you've, you've you see how faithful they have been in your ministry would you grant because the way you are going you are going to overthrow caesar would you grant that when all is said and done let my kids sit at your left and right and jesus looked at her he never said it's an impossible request he said can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism two things one works internally the other one works externally but both must happen to qualify you the seat is vacant but can you drink this one is not a gift it's a reward are we together now one of the requirements is faithfulness there are pastors who will never rise beyond certain membership barrier because they are not faithful god gives you three members you look at them and feel they are not relevant at all are we together oh these members are not serious you are three all of you are broke none of you is smart none of you is working i'm the one who pays your transport what kind of useless membership is this and god is watching and then you admire another church with choice uh what do we call it choice membership this one is working in oil company i said these, these are the kind of members and we we have the effrontery to go back to the secret place and cry that god will find a way of drawing those people from that church to bring it to our church and god says look at this the kind of believers that have been produced within this region no understanding it is required in stewards in men of god in business people in young people in students in whatever dimension of life that you be faithful listen very carefully be faithful be faithful never follow a man who does not have a track record of growth you are only wasting your time no matter how flamboyant the results are it's a mirage anybody who stumbles into financial prosperity is joking is joking i repeat is joking anybody who just stumbles into the anointing is still joking anybody who stumbles into revelation is joking there must be a track record in life your track record is what gives value to your current stature faithfulness here's what jesus has to say about this luke chapter 16 please give us verse 10 to 12 jesus is teaching here luke chapter 16 10 to 12 it says he that is faithful listen now jesus is teaching here it was the the parable of of the unjust servant whose master was about to banish him and he went to reduce the bills for several people so that when he was banished he would now rush to them and jesus is using the opportunity to teach us something here that he that is faithful in that which is least is what he didn't say will be is already i can know whether you qualify for your next level in life by what you are doing with the current level is faithful also in much and he that is unjust please go back to verse 10 he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much next verse 11 
if therefore ye have not been faithful he's speaking in the context of resources now in unrighteous mammon your naira and cobble he says who will commit to you the true riches you know what the true riches are things that money cannot buy but can buy money true riches money itself is a commodity there is something that buys it true riches are you getting what i'm saying now in our world today if you have money you can buy everything but god is saying that money itself like you sell phones money is a product too there is something that can buy it it's called true riches so when god tests you let me tell you what this is saying let me use um let me bring out a thousand naira look at this this is one thousand naira do you know god can arrange favor compass of Femi. I can see him already warming up to be a very can I mean look at the see how sharp he's looking praise the Lord now watch this do you know that in your walk with God a time can come God can just open a door for you hundred thousand comes you are not rich this is unrighteous mammon he's testing you you are rich when he gives you what can buy this you are not rich if you have this this, this is nonsense anything can happen set this on fire you can't pack the ashes to court and say this was one thousand true riches is what can buy this product not shoe buy this this one so he's watching you and he gives you this and you are not faithful in it you misuse it you waste it the kingdom does not benefit from it he says no there is an anointing i can give you that will bring this you have not qualified i tested you with this and you failed are we together god can bring a relationship come god can bring a relationship to your life that you know you didn't even qualify for it is a test you misuse that relationship you take advantage of the people and you don't even max you don't value them and then all of a sudden you cannot be given the true riches that can buy greater relationships faithfulness is a powerful spiritual quality powerful spiritual quality many people are not faithful that's why they pray they fast oh god dry fast seven days 40 days lord give me more anointing give me this give me that and then one day god leads you to one old woman and god says take care of this woman your destiny is to walk in the healing ministry but he won't start by giving you the healing anointing he will start by creating compassion in you take care of this old woman and say oh god this old woman how much will i get from this woman i need something that i will shine so that from that shining to be on youtube and then it will be on all the social media platforms and up i go and god says you see that there's no faithfulness and while that is happening god is watching one young lady somewhere taking care of the woman mama are you okay and she's she's writing her promotion exams through faithfulness she may not know but she's walking herself to a realm of the anointing one day she'll finish taking care of that woman and say father thank you for the privilege my mother was never alive for me to be able to take care of her but thank you for giving me such an old woman and the heavens are open over that young lady a strange anointing comes upon her two years later that lady is walking in a dimension of the healing anointing that nobody can explain and people criticize where did this girl come from from nowhere i've told you there's nobody that comes out from nowhere that you are not aware of the training does not mean they were not trained there is nobody that comes out of nowhere it's a lie when you are in the cave of adulam it's a lonely place when you manifest people say aha this person is lucky no there's no luck in this thing is god speaking to us many of us god trusted us with finances we were not faithful many of us today if i tell you lift your prayer request now you will see prayer point one breakthrough prayer point two financial rest prayer point three financial favor it's still the same thing you are writing 
just different versions so that however God wants to answer it he should just answer it are we together Lord increase in membership did you know while I was praying I was already set to come the rain started all I was doing I, I found tears coming out of my eyes because I was thinking I said my God my God this these people now how 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 do we manage these people but many of you ah, they've come let them come you know you are the superstar when you think like that you will never rise don't forget that men may not know while you are looking at this but there is a God who has the all-seeing eye that looks at you and knows that this man of God should not rise are we together many of us want resources as I've lifted this 1,000 now many of you have been looking at it you are not even hearing me again listen you are not faithful if you are faithful is proof that you are a steward can God give you this and say let me have it back and you say Lord it's yours it's proof of faithfulness Lord after all it came from you I, I you took me from nowhere soaking Gary if you have given me this if you make a demand it goes there are many of you once your hands hold it it's only a need a secular need that will release it the voice of God has no right to make you release this and then you want lots of it and we keep joking that we are having dreams and seeing God is not stupid this system is very orderly once your heart is not with God you won't find anything are we together I've shared this story here once upon a time in this area then nobody knew me nobody i was invited to go and minister somewhere and just like it rained very heavily tonight i had prepared fasted prepared to go there and then the rain started and the people were expecting me and that time there was no protocol to come put umbrella etc all of these formalities that was how i i rolled my sleeves rolled my trouser and held my bible i started praying in tongues in the rain lord don't mind me being so just bless your people if your people are blessed i am satisfied are we together now i remember going there and then to make matters worse the church didn't even make arrangement for umbrella to receive me it was then steve strings who saw me from outside and collected he was also invited he collected an umbrella to run go and receive me outside when i came in they asked me to wait they had to shift some people in front to create space for me to come and sit down it looked painful it looked ego stinging but it was a test of faithfulness can you be faithful even when your reputation is being insulted not everybody will insult your reputation keep forbearing with those who don't value you then you will qualify for those who can value you there are some of you today you will go to minister somewhere they will disrespect you some of you are intelligent business people surrounded by those who have no value keep at what you are doing you will come to a point where god will bring you to people who can recognize the grace you carry and my goodness happy are you when you enter that season in your life where you are surrounded by those who have a recognition of what you carry and will be willing to bless my life was not always like this this ministry was not always like this the first crusade you see crowds everywhere and we're happy many of you who follow me on facebook or follow follow the ministry uh, on facebook and follow what we are doing and you know all the crowds and the things that happen when every time i travel many people just see it and think it's just because he's anointed it's not just because i'm anointed with all humility what you are seeing is a product of many years of faithfulness i've shared with you our first crusade it never you see the secrets of men are in their stories don't just hear the story discern the message are we together i told you about our first crusade i think we're about 20 or so the entire crusade ground i'm not sure we're up to 50 the first crusade we prayed fasted organized when it was time to pray for the sick the whole team had the opportunity one-on-one -on -one. 
it was a test of faithfulness many of us do not want to start small as a student you want to wear the same cloth with a bank manager and so you open your gate wide for a devourer to come and rubbish your life and keep punishing you are we together there are men of god who start in ministry everybody they see is their colleague take it easy move gradually no i'm anointed if not because of condition don't i have a better revelation than kenny and god keeps you there say stay there i just caught a new revelation there's nobody to hear you because there is no track record you can look at a pastor who doesn't seem to have any serious revelation and wonder why god keeps him there faithfulness all he may say is god bless you god lift you god anoint you and then you are there in your pride and arrogance i just finished pieces in the book of ephesians and you remain there for many years is god speaking to us never be ashamed of the track record of faithfulness lord this is the level of grace that you have given me i am happy i am proud of it lord you have given me the anointing to clean chairs i know that you have called me to be an apostle to the nations but in this season my assignment is to clean chairs i receive the grace to do it faithfully not just to clean chairs and say kai oh god if not just people me cleaning chairs and god says that's it you see that and you'll never rise everybody say faithfulness say it again faithfulness Matthew chapter 25 we're going to read three verses 21 23 and 29 thank you Matthew 25 we're reading 21 23 and we're reading 29 I just want to show you something and then we'll begin to pray this was the parable of the talents five two and one talent and this to the one who had five his Lord said unto him after being faithful he said well done good and what faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things let me show you how greatness happens in the kingdom thou has been faithful over a few things what's your reward i will make thee ruler over many things when you are promoted in the kingdom many things happen to you one the anointing upon your life is multiplied number two your operation becomes easy number three god expands your self-influence to cause more people to hear your voice is a product of faithfulness you have been faithful over a few things i gave you a teaching anointing and i did not give you an anointing for miracles and you were not ashamed to teach the people as best as you knew to every time they ask you man of god why is it that we don't see miracles in your life be patient I'm coming I'm not ashamed to say God is bringing me there for now is the teaching grace he has given me I will teach I will make Bible study notes and God is saying this is a man who will not only be a good shepherd he will be a good manager of my anointing and one day that man comes to a meeting and all of a sudden an impartation comes upon him the dimension that has been absent is now supplied by the Spirit he goes back not just as a teacher but as a worker of miracles 23 to the man with the two talents he said his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant same thing thou has been faithful over a few things so it's not the size of what you were given the same commendation i will make thee ruler over many things let's go to 29 29 for unto everyone that hath this is a mystery in the kingdom that when you have it's a sign that you were a good manager and the reward is that he shall have what abundance of anything abundance here doesn't just talk of finance abundance of the anointing abundance of influence abundance of access to revelations and then it says but from him that hath and is not faithful now he says even that which he had shall be taken away it is not only satan that takes things away god too takes things away are we together now not every reduction is caused by demons there are reductions that are a testimony it's a report card from god to you 
that something is wrong with your stewardship when God increases you members rise today and mysteriously members just go down sometimes it could be that it's a message from God that I trusted you with 30 people and I observed your stewardship your stewardship does not merit multiplication you rise in finances and then sometimes you just go down never to rise again it could be a message that you need to upgrade on your stewardship you rise in influence and all of a sudden you find out within a season all your helpers are no longer there all the people whose voice who who listen to your voice and acknowledge your voice are no longer there it could be a sign that you are abusing the privilege of stewardship are we together the prayer that you need to pray in this season is for God to help you that whilst you are waiting for a supply of greater dimensions of his grace but that he grants you the fortitude to be faithful if God gives you 10 naira be faithful if God gives you one shoe polish it don't sit down running your eyes on every shoe and say don't worry except God is not my God I'm coming and and that shoe will say you are not coming this is not how to get me you get me by washing the one you have it's a rubber shoe wash it it's a 200 naira trouser wash it are we together now we live in a society that applauds people for living a fake life that claps for people for jumping seasons and as soon as they clap for you and as frequent as they clap for you that's the same way they will clap against you because every time you jump up you must go down but when you grow up you remain up the difference between jumping and growing is that you are still connected to your root when you jump you are suspended nothing backs you no support so you must come down when you grow up the tallest building in the world is still connected to the earth that's why it stands nothing suspended has an a, a, the ability to stay indefinitely when they send satellites to orbit the earth and orbit other planets and all of that after a time requirement because they are not connected to the earth they must be sent back planes don't fly indefinitely in the sky they get to a point where they must make contact with the earth again for some of you here this is your miracle service tonight the Lord is speaking to you you are living a fake life go back to the basics let me tell you this don't ever generalize success just because everybody around you is successful does not mean you are successful go back and learn the principles corporate success is deception are you hearing what I'm saying now we are all successful a day will come life will separate you and you stand as an individual and it will be a test of your values whether or not it's like a defense the way students do defense you will need to defend and validate your success any door god has not opened for me i'm not under pressure to go because when he opens it he will open it in honor do you know if god does not open a door your tenacity can force that door to open that you forced a door and it opened a man can go around with complimentary cards i'm a man of god i'm a gospel artist in fact you've not had anything like you just invite me and watch what happens you can go around and out of the 1000 invitations you beg for you may get one or two or three or four and you call it increase you see when you open the door by yourself you have to keep it open by yourself but when god opens it god when he opens it he keeps it by his own hand the hands that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be afraid there is a hand that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be hallelujah 
years ago i had a conversation we we're about to pray with a gentleman and he asked me a very honest question he said apostle i've come for koinonia and i've seen the crowds of people and he asked a question he said can you reproduce these results and i said that's not me to answer you are asking time not me keep watching and i think two weeks ago he sent me a text you know just joking I'm, I'm just saying it and he's just sent a text and he said apostle you are dangerous i say i'm not dangerous the laws of god are dangerous it is not me it is the laws of god whoever will keep these truths it will work for you are you getting what i'm saying even if you are afraid of yourself trust his laws and watch them shock you and make a wonder out of your life brothers and sisters listen to me in a few minutes now we're going to begin to pray and many of you will stand and watch your life change as if it's magic it is not just because a man who is anointed is standing before you there is a system in the kingdom we make our boast first in the lord and then in the power of his might his might the power of his might the power that is released when his laws operate those who don't understand will look at these things and think it's boasting it's not boasting it's true the predictability of god's principles hallelujah I challenge you today that much more than the miracles you are receiving you must trust God to go back and say Lord teach me your ways we reign in this kingdom we're about to pray now I want to show you a very dangerous scripture that God opened my eyes to brothers and sisters if God does not open your eyes to see how a thing works you may never know do you know that in every challenge that you have right now a way of escape is there but it takes God to open your eyes. Psalm 77. Turn there. Let me show you something. Psalm 77 and verse 19. Psalm 77 verse 19. Give us from Amplified if it's possible. Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. Alpha and Omega, my trust is in you. I am that I am, my trust is in you. Tonight I put them on you. My trust is in you. It says, Your way in delivering your people was through the sea. Listen carefully. The same sea that was an obstacle he said their way of escape was inside that water inside that trouble he says and your path through the great waters how can you be in trouble and god says in that trouble that's where your answer is but it takes your eyes to see it god hides a formula in your pain and keeps it there until revelation opens you to it he says your way of delivering your people was through the sea the same sea is said that your path through the water yet you pass through it and cover it and nobody can trace your footsteps this one give us king james again it will take revelation for you to know how can i look at a water challenges and great waters he said thy way is in the sea in that rent challenge is a formula that can make you a landlord but it will take the spirit of revelation in that sickness that brought you to koinonia is hidden a mystery that can bring you into the healing anointing it says thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known god what kind of god are you you do something and cover it so no man can just look and say ah i but when he opens your eyes all of a sudden you will discover that so the water can part i never knew and all of a sudden there will be dry ground and you walk to it and the egyptians will think and god will cover it and say i don't open it for everybody it is a way 
but not for everybody are we together these are some of the deep mysteries about the anointing sometimes you see me give you instructions that don't make sense shout jesus keep quiet it does you will try it and it won't work it's a mystery there is a way in it there is a pathway that when god opens your eyes to the systems of the kingdom then you can see things that don't make sense and make wonders out of them god is speaking to someone here that the prayer you are praying the answer is already within your environment all it takes is for your eyes to see hagar was punished by sarah the bible says she was in the wilderness dying of test the young lad cried to heaven when an angel appeared all of a sudden they saw an oasis bringing water the water was there but her eyes could not see the ways of god and let me tell you this is why we come to how to the house of god because there is something about the corporate gathering of god give us verse 13 of the same scripture give us verse 13 of the same scripture go ahead and read thy ways oh god where is it is found in your sanctuary when we come here it says in your sanctuary in your house you have you have ordained a place that when we meet you will show us a way when god put this miracle service and call this ministry and put all of these things it's not just a ritual there is a mystery about the sanctuary he has ordained that every time you come before god he must open a way so don't carry your challenges and come and you are wondering and say i went to every church i don't know what the church you went to believe but in this sanctuary there is a way there is a way i dare to tell you there is a way man of god i have been in i've gone everywhere with all due respect i don't know where you went to but there is a way in the sanctuary solomon dedicated a place and said lord let me tie a covenant to this sanctuary if any man prays and turns this direction not for the sake of their faith for the covenant in this place answer them when they were about to kill daniel in the days of that of, of nebuchadnezzar daniel opened the gate and faced jerusalem he, he was afraid he couldn't depend on his faith he opened the door and said lord i engage the covenant that covenant that solomon made with the temple in jerusalem it is not only a man that can bring miracles a place can be anointed to birth miracles it was in a place that jacob went to sleep he never met a man but he met a place and that night the heavens were open and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens he said this is the house of god this is the gates of heaven tonight i want to stir up faith many of you have come you have made sacrifices pastor femi thank you thank you so so much praise the lord many of you have come from several places you have made sacrifices please don't come here wasting your time and don't come here wondering let's see what god will do already i can answer you you won't get anything already let me let me be honest with you because god is not a magician but there are people that come here determined and say lord i have seen you in this place i can't go back this way that something must shift in my life something must change in my life not all of you may be trusting god for sickness for healing you know but many of us are trusting god for one thing or the other i like you to believe there is a way in the sea i bring you a word there is a way this kingdom operates by mysteries the bible says there is no temptation given but that which is common to man you are not the first to have house rent issue you are not the first to have financial issues listen carefully you are not the first to have academic issues you are not the first to have excuse me spiritual issues you are not the first but though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. That's a part of this song I like. Though we are few, there are witnesses. There are people who have been healed. 
there are people who God changed their lives overnight. They may not be many, but they are on earth. Testifiers of his faithfulness. As a testament that if God did it before, he can do it again. And this is the song. It is our confidence in God and our confidence in his ways that gives us the audacity to gather people and say come he will change you without the presence of God and access to the ways of God we are we are scammers we are not if we are not just liars we are scammers why do you gather people and tell them come we dare you to come we call a solemn assembly not only because we know god by the privilege of his grace we have found grace with him and he has made us stewards of the mysteries ephesians chapter 3 this will be the last scripture ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 from verse 2 it says if ye have heard paul is speaking of the dispensation of grace of the grace of god which is given me to you word for your sake how that by revelation verse 3 he made known unto me how did paul know it by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read another word is whereby when you experience it you may know the basis ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse 5 a mystery that has been hidden in other ages let me tell you some of the things we are doing although they are spiritual although they are biblical they are mysteries that have been hidden they are there the same way many people swam through the red sea although there was a way it took a generation of men to be open to that mystery there are many mysteries that control results that have not been routed by many but the bible says that in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit by the spirit it was a revelation that god gave me that people write their requests and come and drop here it's not something that i copied from anywhere it's a revelation stupid though but look at the testimonies that have come out from it are we blessed now god's servant bishop david oyedeko was given the revelation of feet worship a revelation that had not been known to anybody people read it and all of a sudden the testimonies that come out of it People had communion. People take communion in Orthodox churches and different churches and just take it even while they are drunk. But somebody came with a light about communion and all of a sudden people take communion now and cancers just die. There are mysteries, brothers and sisters. There are many people that never knew that the house of God is powerful. Praise the Lord. Are we together? so you must understand that god in this season wants to shift you but you won't just shift you just by saying shift there are mysteries tonight i bring you a word there is a way in the sea hallelujah there is a way there is a way there is something god can do about your finances there's something god can do about your family situation you left fire on the mountain and came back you wait until the red sea parts and god will rubbish pharaoh tonight in your presence rise up on your feet begin to thank the lord for what you have heard tonight cry for the grace to be faithful go ahead cry for the grace to be faithful
cry for the grace to be faithful lord grant me the grace to be faithful grant me the grace to stay as you lift me grant me the grace not to rush seasons in my life grant me the grace Grant me the grace. Hallelujah. Just pray one prayer. Lord, change my story. Visit me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with faith. Change my story. Visit me. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Tonight is an unusual service because time has gone. We're going to be very, very fast. Very, very fast at that. Um, like I told us, we're going to start praying for the sick. We'll start by praying for the sick and um, now this is how we're going to do it because of because of those of you outside don't worry you don't worry wherever you are you will be attended to are we together you will be attended to so hold on before I ask the people to come you don't have to just cooperate with the ushers if they need you to do anything just just it's a temporary inconvenience we're doing this just to be able to manage time and to do all that we have to do hallelujah praise the lord now please hold on let's let's not be distracted those of us who are trusting god for healing is a miracle service it's not just limited to healing but we're going to pray for the sick now now we're going to do this very fast and um, please, those that will be ministering, let's, let's do it very fast. It's not in how long... Listen, let me tell you something about the anointing. It's not just in how long you are touched or the frequency. Just a touch is enough for the anointing. The same way a small drug can step into your body and that's it. The wonders are done. I'd like you to believe God to touch you, change your life, whether it's a blood disease, whatever it is. Let's agree with you. Hallelujah. We'll do that very, very fast. While we are doing that, please, um, if you have come with your requests, ushers, um, please help them. PR department, you can join them. Protocol, let's just join and see how we can make this very fast. So that at the same time, we are collecting the prayer requests. Remember, it's not a ritual. Um, when it's time, when they come to you, you can hand over the request. If you are yet to write yours, you can quickly do that those online following us from whatever nation you can just connect your requests are already there and we're praying the power of god will touch it there too hallelujah praise the lord please i like you to be very intentional i know that most times we do this at the miracle services but be careful lest you make a ritual out of this and then at the same time waste your time i have seen the power and the glory of god um, upon my life and upon this ministry in in ways that that are humbling in ways that are powerful expect a testimony please refuse that you're not going back the way you came no matter what the medical situation is remember i told you there is a way in the sea there is a way hallelujah when i do that um We'll finish it and then we can now minister deliverance and just prophesy so that we are able to make time praise the lord father we're gathered tonight by your wisdom and your power lord we're about to minister to those who are sick and lord we trust your power to heal we trust your power to heal to the uttermost in the name of jesus anoint my hands anoint every man and woman of god who will be ministering to the sick let there be the hearing of faith let there be the walking of miracles do this and glorify yourself in the name of jesus christ praise the lord uh, father we give you all the praise 
let your power flow let miracles begin in this place we give you all the praise we give you all the honor in the name of jesus christ i pray amen please make sure that while you submit your prayer request be in the attitude of prayer if i were you i'll be praying in the spirit don't be distracted just because we are taking our time to pray for the sea god bless you Deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hearts and worship as we bless your holy name. Yes, you deserve the glory. the honor yes Lord we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great yes there is no one else There is no one else like you Yes, you are great And you do miracles so great Oh, there is no one else like you Oh, there is no one else like you Saying you deserve the glory, say you deserve the glory and the honor, Lord, and the honor. So we lift our hands, so we lift our hands and worship as we praise. As we praise oh, yes, you deserve the glory. why we worship tonight so we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name give you the glory you're the miracle there is no one no one else that can touch me like you do they can heal me say there is You are great. You do miracles. 
Let every of the name fade away The name of cancer, the name of HIV Let every of the name fade away The name of arthritis fades away Let every of the name fade away
say after me in the name of Jesus. We are praying now, please. We are praying. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every force from the pit of hell standing against my lifting tonight i challenge you lift your voice and begin to pray everyone every force every force nothing will stop your lifting this is a season in the name of jesus Every stronghold shall be broken. You were the victor's crown. Say in the name of Jesus, every recurrent pattern in my life right now, I declare you destroyed. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Challenge every recurrent pattern by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Every recurrent pattern in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern. Papo Sabalakatopa Shabren Legadea. In the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace apportioned for me tonight. I declare that I must step into it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension. Make sure you are praying every dimension, every dimension, every dimension. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, let your fire fall upon my life upon my family and destroy every planting that is not of god lift your voice and pray let your fire the visitation of your fire the visitation of your fire upon my life upon my life pray let your fire fall upon my life let your fire bring a separation lift your hands I'm about to pray for you now we are never doing the same thing every time I rebuke devils there are lives and destinies 
that are under the yokes of darkness it's time for the devil to give up are we together are you ready to shout that name that is above all names let me tell you i want you to be childlike tonight and just follow these instructions and watch the wonder working power of god in your life at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus everywhere and as you shout that name the sword of the lord will pierce through every root of every challenge and begin to command victory for you are we together now especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time i'm ministering deliverance now every yoke of darkness that has tied anyone's life as you shout this name may the visitation of that fire are you ready now one two three I command the fire, the fire of the Spirit. Bring them up, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, every altar and everything, every high thing that is not of God, I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now. hallelujah i think the ground is good enough you can bring them in the name of jesus i'm praying now i'm still praying anyone's destiny that is under siege right now i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i'm seeing i'm seeing like bolts of fire falling on people if it falls on you your destiny is opening up lord where are they i stretch my hands may the visitation of fire Open destinies now. Shake it to katakata. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Inside, outside. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a horn and I'm seeing fire burning it. Please be sensitive. This is a symbol of authorities that sit over lives and families. He said in Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, What's yes thou? He said four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judah, so that no man does lift his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. Lift your heads. I'm praying right now. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God is falling on people inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, anyone here, Shabo Sekatos Kabariakata, under any kind of demonic siege at the count of three that horn that symbol of authority that has tied your family that has tied your life it is uprooted one two three i release that fire now i release that fire now i release that fire now by the anointing of the holy ghost I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost anyone here whose life is under siege be delivered now hallelujah the Lord wants to visit the issue of barrenness but then he's using physical barrenness as a prophetic symbol for productivity so that you are not surprised if you are a man and the anointing still visits you the womb is the place where seed is planted that womb can be anything a woman's womb is just a type and a shadow of a system of increase there are people a barren woman is a woman whose womb cannot receive and multiply seed the way it is physically that's how it is spiritually you receive the word but it never produces it's barrenness you receive finances but it never multiplies it's barrenness lift your hands as i pray listen many people many people are going to be delivered from just this prayer you will be surprised to know that many of your requests are tied to this one prayer lift your hands i'm praying now that in the name of jesus ah, i tell you all i see is just fire that's what i'm saying every spirit responsible for barrenness in anyone's life right now 
by the fire of the Holy Ghost I declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost overflow one I'm seeing three people I'm praying now I know because of time we can't let you come in but I'm seeing three people two are ladies one is a gentleman this prayer is for you there is an anointing as I'm speaking that is coming overflow one on people outside the Lord is bringing massive deliverance barrenness is a dangerous thing listen whatever you give a barren person is as well as wasting your time because it cannot grow it cannot multiply Jesus saw the fig tree it was taken from the earth taken from the earth but it was not producing in the name of Jesus I'm still praying that prayer again that any life here that Satan has rendered barren I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I decree and declare be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness hallelujah Kemi who is Kemi Kemi um, I may not maybe I may just talk to one or two people Kemi you are wearing red it's like it's a guy called Kemi who is that you are wearing red what's your name uh -uh, I didn't I'm saying this is I'm saying I know that Kemi is a lady's name it's not a guy I will pray for you it's your hunger this is you are wearing red what's your name your name is Kemi yes sir you are wearing red I'll pray for you but gentlemen you are here there is a hunger that you carry listen you came from ah uh, I'm seeing cross river yeah? cross river cross river cross river yes, you sir. Came. Yes, sir. the Lord is saying I should tell you listen to me yes, you came because of a hunger yes, sir. to truly get an anointing yes, sir. but you see this message I preach was for you yes, sir. you heard what I'm saying yes, this running around to want to do ministry by force is not the way it works the Lord himself he will give you an anointing but he will give you direction what you need is an encounter with the word and direction but you will never go back the same receive that anointing a new dimension a new season my dear there is a spirit of prophecy upon your life in the name of jesus christ i stir up that spirit that dimension i open you to a realm where you begin to see and hear the sounds of the spirit in the name of jesus as i'm praying this i'm seeing number 11 the same thing that came on this lady the anointing of the spirit is looking for 11 people there is the spirit of prophecy. Where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Eleven people. Eleven people scattered inside and outside. In the name that is above all names. Receive that spirit. You need it. I stir it up from your spirit man. I stir it up from your spirit man. The grace for prophecy. Makatos Kabarakata. Sons and daughters. Stepping into dimensions of prophecy some of you you have only had dreams only dreams but i shift you to dimensions of visions prophetic visions you will never be the same i'm still praying this i'm still praying this there are people this is your call but no anointing has ever stirred it in the name of jesus i shift you in the spirit into that anointing the very anointing the seat of the prophetic i move you by grace in the name of jesus christ i activate it i activate it that dimension i'm praying i don't know why god is moving this way there are people the call of God is upon your life but you don't know it you don't know that the call of God is upon your life but tonight as a token the Spirit of God is visiting you whether you know it or not Lord where are they I stretch my hands now if the hand and the mandate of God is upon your life
for your destiny in the area of the fivefold. I declare, let the anointing of the Spirit locate you. As it locates you, the Lord begins to prepare you. Where are they? Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Abaraka toka 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 ta. Shabenda salaba seketa subria katali katosh. Hallelujah. There is a dangerous spirit. Our time is up. Hold on. But there is a spirit that I want to rebuke now. I just saw written in the air rejection. Hold on. Many of you do not know the reason why good things never reach you. You stand, you are watching and an opportunity come. Rejection is not just a state, it's a spirit. Lift your hands. Don't pray, don't do anything, just lift your hands. Hallelujah. That's the instruction the Lord is giving me. Just lift your hands, just do what I'm asking you to do. In the name of Jesus, many of you will be surprised now. There are people, it's like a yoke. I'm seeing like cowries, these cowries that they use. That's what I'm seeing. And in the name of Jesus Christ, as the power of God is smashing that rubbish, that's how many people who have been despised, been despised. The Bible says where you have been forsaken so that no man passes through you. It says you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Right now I stretch my hands from the front to the back. Overflow one, two, three, the roadside and online. If there is anyone here under the siege of the spirit of rejection, right now in the name of Jesus, in this silence, may the anointing of the spirit begin to bring deliverance. Right now, I'm praying, it's happening right now. Taking away that spirit from your life. Please be sensitive, we are doing a quick walk. Rejection, rejection, rejection. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Rejection. I command that spirit to leave. I'm still praying. I command that spirit to leave. I command that spirit to leave. Alongside with this, there are people. Bad luck. Good things must always turn to evil when it, hold, when it enters your hand. No matter what it is. If they give you money, something must go bad. A good opportunity it must be destroyed you enter a relationship something must happen i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is under this kind of siege here at this miracle service fire 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 i release the fire of the spirit right now from the front to the back inside outside I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. Keep your hands lifted and pray. Mighty things are happening in the spirit. I ask us to pray a prayer that the Lord put in my heart. Patterns. I'm still seeing it again. There are some of you, the same thing happens to every member of your family. At certain seasons, everything must happen. Either somebody dies or someone doesn't marry straight and correct. You must have a child before you get married. Or something, someone will rape you. Someone raped your mother. Someone will rape some kind of nonsense patterns. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Lord, I pray that as your people shout that name every pattern that happened to the fathers that is about to replay itself in the life of your people let it be broken at the count of three one two three i declare those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now hallelujah the spirit of delay god is taking delay from someone's life that's what i'm seeing god is taking delay i'm seeing it going delay 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 not everybody but i'm seeing god is it will surprise you after this miracle service the kind of speed that your life will enter 
Delay. Hallelujah. My dear, come. This come. This is your first time here. Where are you coming from? You're coming from Abuja. Yes, I want to pray for you. You had the prayer I just said we should pray. Yes. That prayer was, was for you. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? There is a spirit of delay that must live your life. You are a great lady, but I see delay. Come. It's a demonic spirit. And if you are not delivered and you get up and go to Abuja just like that, it will be as if you did not come before the presence of God. But I lay my hands upon your head. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of delay, I call you by name. Let this lady go now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Go now. Live her life forever. In the name of Jesus. That lady wearing lime cloth. You, this one, come quickly, please. Look at me. Salvation has come to your family. The month of June. Look at me. The month of June, I'm prophesying by the Spirit, is the month for your family. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's changing everything. Everything completely by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. I'm hearing a name, Doris. I'm hearing a name Doris Doris who is Doris I'm hearing a name Doris Doris are you Doris your name is Doris I'm going to pray for you your name too is Doris that's your baby I will pray for you look at me look at me shout Jesus Yeah? look at me witchcraft I'm stretched the Lord is just saying I should stretch my hands in front of you I stretch my hands and I declare I'm seeing an altar catching fire in the name of Jesus Christ I declare it by the Spirit I stretch my hands that's what the Lord is saying I should do I stretch my hands it catches fire now oh oh oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Doris, look at me. Where are you coming from? I'm from Congo. From Congo. Hold my hands. Say shame and reproach. Shame and reproach is taken from my life. Is taken from my life forever. Forever. Say it again. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to me. Shame and reproach is taken from your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, shame and reproach is taken. Hold on, I'm not done with that. I decree and declare that shame and reproach is taken from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's father has not been paid for 11 years. I'm seeing, I don't know what the condition is, but I'm seeing at, at 11 years or so your father has not been paid it's something they have been pursuing please make sure you are honest who is that come your dad where is he he's in Lagos you too where is he do you believe that if I pray for you a miracle will happen let's pray father in the name of Jesus we make it happen by the spirit of the living God I decree and declare that between now and the next 90 days let there be a miracle let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus Christ why are you all coming your parents 
no don't I, if, if i pray most of you is not it's not that word you are just coming just because you want it may be related in the name of jesus i'm i'm just praying for you as i'm touching you, you see let me let me tell you something brothers and sisters you see this touch you see this touch just this touch you see there is power in it it's just that we are very carnal people do you understand after service you can hug me and jump on me but now what is on me is what makes this touch different you see that you can you can have it is not just a touch maybe a touch for jamboree no 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 you can i can lay my hands on you right and then something can come upon you i can lay my hands upon you and then your life will change sometimes you see me just speak and you think it as as i pray like this you see watch your life and see what it becomes are, are you getting what i'm saying now that's 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 the point the word of god that you can't see it does not mean it's not resting on you when it rests on you like a hen over her, her the eggs it will stay there until there is a performance this thing you see is not just power it's authority it's authority there is authority in the spirit it's not just, just sit down and we keep watching I, be, just, the fact that you are here within this vicinity alone let me tell you whether you are inside or outside your life will never never be the same if i never get to touch you dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye